thank you also from my side for these really wonderful presentations. And uh, I do not want to lose time. Uh, we have the panel and, and, and we do it as Hannes suggested. Uh, since you offered uh, Michael Losch to do your presentation or your uh, answer our questions in, in uh, uh, English. Uh, Michael Losch is now a special envoy for green industry in the Austrian Ministry for Climate. Uh, you've been serving in several ministers, ministries uh, here in Austria, but you were also in Brussels, uh, partly together with Franz Fischler at the Commission. Uh, you were at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, you were at the bank, so you have a, 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 rich, uh, a rich overview of, of the economy, I, I would say. And uh, our question we wanted to ask you is, uh, what do you think, what, what is uh, Austria's role and Austria's uh, responsibility on the European and <coughs> global Uh, scale uh, and and so please react to what we just heard from our eminent speakers before. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon uh, from my side. I would also wish to congratulate and thank uh, uh, Jung Keller for having been with us. Uh, we met uh, Mr. Jung Keller and myself very shortly in Paris a year ago uh, at the uh, at the IA Ministerial, uh, already discussing. Uh, Uh, the themes about Africa. And indeed, uh, I think there is a lot of possibilities of cooperation uh, between uh, front-runner European industries in the area of renewables, uh, hydrogen, uh, and so on with, with Africa. We shouldn't leave Africa as a territory just for, uh, for China and Asia. I think it's uh, very logic to cooperate um, between Europe and Africa. Uh, Well, you asked me, Mr. Hinterberg, um, about, uh, about what can Austria do in the world uh, to, uh, to contribute. And uh, uh, I would start with uh, policy. Of course, uh, Austria uh, wants to be uh, in, the, in our government program, a front runner uh, in, uh, in energy transition, in climate uh, policy. We want to be climate neutral already uh, 2040 and not 2050. And in particular, we want to have a 100% renewable electricity system. We are already, I, I looked at some, some graphs, we are already number one in Europe with, with our 72, 73% uh, renewable electricity and we want to reach uh, 100%. Um, compared to Germany, for example, Germany is, is currently at about uh, 35, 38% renewable electricity and wants to step this, step this up to 65%. Uh, so there we are in a, in a, in a different uh, game in a way. And of course, uh, having, reaching 100% renewable electricity means that all the hydrogen you produce from electrolyzers is automatically uh, green hydrogen. Whereas in a country, take China, take other countries, which just have 30% renewable electricity, of course, the question of producing hydrogen is a much more delicate one because it will not be per se in the full value chain green. So that's also why Austria is a front runner uh, concerning green hydrogen. And we started uh, during our EU presidency with a uh, hydrogen initiative, which was then picked up also by the IEA in Paris and uh, also now in the commission uh, uh, with, um, with a hydrogen strategy and a sector coupling strategy. So hydrogen, green hydrogen, is, I think, a very hot theme. Uh, I also read it, uh, Ms. Dixon, uh, in, in, the, in the two papers of the Club of Rome, I think in the, in the system change compass, uh, hydrogen is, uh, is, is, is mentioned as a key pillar in, in, in energy transition, green hydrogen, of course. And I think also very interesting in the planetary emergency plan uh, uh, 2.0, there's a lot of not so much hydrogen, but also the question of um, forest, afforestation, land use, I think this is also a very important uh, subject in addition to pure energy policy. So, uh, but it's not only politics, uh, it's of course uh, industry and I'm also happy that I, I did now more than four years as served now as Director General for Energy and I just uh, a week ago I was reassigned uh, the task of being a special envoy for a green industry. And uh, I really indeed think that uh, the key is also, as Professor Schleicher uh, uh, showed in his graph, that industry decarbonization 
uh, is a core contributor to achieving climate neutrality. And secondly, it has it has a, a scaling effect uh, if we if we use our uh, industry, our uh, machinery, our technology to export it and also to uh, to uh, to help other uh, regions of the world to decarbonize in other sectors. So there's this double role of, of industry, uh, of enabler uh, and of uh, energy uh, intensive industry to decarbonize itself. And uh, I would start, uh, I will give three examples. We have, we have the, of course, the uh, electricity industry. Austria is a hotspot for hydropower, so not hydrogen, it's standard hydropower, pumped storage plants. Let's not forget that we had in the Verbund, Austria's biggest uh, um, electricity company, we had formerly Verbund plan. So we constructed, uh, they constructed their own power plants. There haven't been a lot hydro big, projects in the last decades. So this team of Verbundplan uh, has moved to Puri, the Finnish company, which is now called AFRI, um, which is uh, uh, employing more than uh, 17,000 uh, employees now. And in Austria, it's, it's our old uh, competence center for, uh, for hydrogen and, and uh, pump storage plants. Yeah? We have um, a company called ILF uh, together. It's a, it's a Tyrolean company with about worldwide 3000 uh, engineers, they are doing desert tech kind projects. Uh, I recently visited in, uh, in the Emirates, uh, um, a project, uh, I'll show you this here, uh, ILF, if you, can see, if you can see this. So an Austrian company, which is building, constructing in the Emirates, a 800 megawatt uh, uh, photovoltaic station. Uh, which is, uh, in my view now, really the starting shot uh, for, uh, for contributing uh, also partnerships with Africa. Uh, we shouldn't think only on, uh, of, of building these to re-import to Austria this, uh, this energy, but we uh, should think about uh, helping uh, and, and, uh, and creating a win-win situation. So, so also producing this uh, energy from renewables uh, foremost in the local region and then to cooperate uh, to, to balance the system with connectivity, with surpluses, with electrolysis to, to hydrogen. I'm very happy that uh, Mr. Junkella also mentioned green hydrogen. I think this is exactly where Austria has, has its uh, strengths. We have a company called Fronios, uh, which is a leader in, uh, in PV and uh, um, in, how do you say, uh, converters and, uh, uh, and, and steering electricity, uh, but also in fuel cells now and, and electrolysis. Um, but let me move to the second uh, strong uh, sector, which is the energy intensive industry itself. We have, uh, and this was the, at the core of our um, of our um, EU presidency when we presented the Age to Future project of our chief steelmaker, First Alpine. Uh, there is really the vision that, uh, and let's, let's not forget, First Alpine is the largest energy consumer in Austria. So we are, even if uh, we saw that also CO2, also the largest CO2 emitter. So if we are unhappy, about, uh, about our CO2 emissions. This has a lot to do with, we are happy that we have still steel production here and we have a steel production which has already a very good CO2 footprint compared to steel produced in other areas of the world. So if we have a steel producer which is now uh, really going into uh, shifting steel production away from coal-fired uh, steel mel or melting to uh, hydrogen uh, fired uh, uh, melting and, 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 and the chemical process involved with it. I'm, I'm not an expert, I'm not a chemist for, for steel, uh, but I've seen, I've visited the plant. I think it's really impressive. And we see now that a lot of other steel industries in the world uh, followed into this path. So I think this is an example where, where we can also export the ideas and the technology. Uh, another example is cement industry, very energy intensive. And I, uh, I'm informed that Borealis and Lafarge, one of the largest uh, cement uh, producers, now think about having a pilot project of, of capturing the CO2 at the production and, and using it and, and uh, um, neutralizing it uh, chemically. So also here, uh, front runner 
projects. And thirdly, I would mention, uh, as I said before, uh, and because also as a reaction to the to the reports of the of the Club of Rome, I think the the issue of um, forest loss um, and of afforestation of new afforestation is one of the biggest issue in the world. And I'm very happy that uh, that the reports of the Club of Rome. Uh, uh, really put this, I think, of the 10 commitments, it's the first two commitments, basically. The, it makes no sense if we don't, if we don't stop deforestation in, in Brazil, if we don't, uh, if we don't help uh, also in, in critical regions uh, managed by desertification to help with local uh, uh, afforestation measures. And I think Austria also here, we have a lot of industries in the area forest industry. Uh, unfortunately, they are mostly in the news uh, if the activities in Romania. Uh, uh, I think it would be good if there would be more, uh, more knowledge transfer uh, to, to afforestation projects uh, with Africa. Uh, I'm going to, to, uh, to dive deeper uh, in, in that in the, in, in the future months. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, knowledge and companies in biomass, which is also a big um, a very important complement uh, to green electricity production because it's so far the only green electricity production which you can turn on and turn off when you wish and not uh, when the sun uh, or the wind uh, uh, is blowing. So I said these three pillars, uh, ele electricity production and, and, and companies in, in energy production, then the, and the ele energy intensive industries, steel, cement, and certainly the whole forestry uh, sector. I think these are three areas of uh, strengths where we have uh, great companies in Austria and where we really should uh, seek uh, also international corporations in particular also with our uh, uh, African neighbors. And let me add uh, two things on the, to sum up politically. Uh, I think we have to move a lot. We have to, we have to foster R and D, but we have to move from R and D to deployment, and this is exactly what has to happen now in in electrolysis in in, in hydrogen. It's good uh, to to talk about uh, research. We, we should we should further invest in research, but we should also start now with deployment. And I'm very happy that the European Commission and the European Union, as part also of this green deal, uh, is is using the um, uh, how is it called? IPCES, we call it IPCES, the important projects of uh, common European interest to enable this from the state aid rules in, in areas of hydrogen, of low carbon industry, of microelectronics to move uh, this next step with new uh, enabling technologies to deployment uh, and to really uh, to, to, to make the, uh, the, the, the difference on the ground. And secondly, lastly, um, I think, nevertheless, we have to ensure a holistic approach uh, and, a, and a level playing field worldwide. And unfortunately, also, I would recommend to read, to read that, for example, the Sandbag study, uh, February this year. Very frustrating. Also, Mr. Jumkeller said the bad news from IEA, but uh, really share the, the regrets when, when investments uh, fall and a lot of positive uh, the momentum uh, is receiving some setback. Also here, when I read in this uh, setback study that there is plans to build 57 gigawatt of new coal-fired electricity power plants in, in our neighbor countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, in Turkey, 34,000 uh, megawatt. In Bosnia, 4,000 megawatt. In Serbia, 2,000 megawatt. I really, uh, I think uh, the European Union has to think about not uh, not on collaborating, of course, not at all playing the better guy or punishing, but we need a fair system of a border carbon uh, mechanism uh, to, 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 to level out these differences, not to expose our re renewable efforts with uh, cheap uh, and, and fossil uh, imports. I think something which is very normal in VAT, that you that you that you adjust the difference in VAT between na uh, neighbor states. I think this should also be a, a logic step to adjust for different uh, CO2 prices uh, in uh, in uh, countries. I think this will be a huge step. I'm very happy that uh, that this is also part of the 
of the Green Deal Plan of the European uh, Commission. And I think this is a very important part, uh, not as a punishment, but as a, as, a, as, a, as a striving for a level playing field in order to, to enable uh, front runners to, to go ahead with their, uh, with their transition in energy and in uh, decarbonized uh, industrial uh, production. Uh, uh, of, uh, of our uh, industry. So uh, these were my, uh, was my part uh, and uh, I'm very happy to continue the discussion. Thanks. Can I just show the paper again? It was the question in the chat. So we had, this, this was this, a path, the path of least resistance by, uh, it's called Sandbag. I can only really, it's a little bit frustrating, but really, uh, read it, uh, um, there are a lot of the, there's a list of the issue, a lot of new uh, coal-fired plants still under planning or under construction, and also increased connections, electricity grid connections in particular to those countries. So uh, we have won an excellent European electricity market. Uh, electricity market is, is very vital integrated in Europe, much more integrated than in the US, for example. And of course, if we, if we, uh, if we add, uh, if we add uh, countries which not only build new coal-fired plants, but in addition have subsidy schemes, state aid uh, built uh, plants, this is, uh, this is really detrimental to our efforts uh, in Europe to uh, decarbonize uh, electricity production. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask Sandrine and, and also Kande if they want to react immediately. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think that um, it was very clear where some of the hard to abate sectors in Austria are really making a difference. And I would say that also on steel and aluminium, Sweden and Norway are also moving in that direction and the work that I'm doing with the Energy Transition Commission demonstrates that actually many of our sectors are definitely leading. Um, in, in Africa, we, we need to figure out ways to collaborate. And I think that if this high level panel um, is effective both in trying to bring the AU and the EU together, that will be essential. And it's essential for a variety of reasons. One, obviously, because Africa should have the same rights and access to energy as we have, but also because if we are truly wanting the African region to move away from war, to move away from um, and to alleviate poverty, we, we have to assist not in the usual development and traditional ways, but through entrepreneurial activity, innovation, creation and empowerment of African entrepreneurs. And, and I think that uh, the new generation, the this generation in Africa is doing unbelievable things um, to try to fundamentally shift by working together is, is really um, essential at this time. So I'm really hopeful that the work with Connie Hedegaard will pay off. And I'm really hopeful that Austria will continue to find a place to promote and push its hard to abate sectors to share also within the sectors how to move forward and then to also create the right cross sectoral value chain conversations that are necessary to bring the whole value chain on board, which is also essential. Thank, thank you. Kande, do you want to add something? Yes, the, with the work we're going to do on this high level panel, Connie and I agreed that we don't just want to do analytics. We, so the work you're doing on the Energy Transitions Commission will be very useful. We want to take from others. We want to do some practical things. For example, we already want to see how we build collaboration between African regulators and the Florence School of Regulation mm -hmm. that you already have in Europe. Mm -hmm. Everybody tells us, bankers, you name it, without the right regulations, you will not in attract the right scale of investment. We say, fine, mm -hmm. that's a problem we can, we can, and already we have a design together with the Florence School, the University of Cape Town, Rocky Mountain Institute, MIT, 
many people had a similar idea. So we brought those ideas together and we're defining an African school of regulators that will partner with European regulators to say, okay, how, what is the role of a regulator in building markets, allowing a level playing field so that we can move the transition and crowd in uh, private investment that we're looking. A second area is this direct business to business partnerships. How do we make Afri some African utilities profitable, uh, given their demographics now as potential markets, and see how they can peer with uh, uh, European utilities as an investment model? What business to business models will make that happen? So again, it's win-win. It's commercial, but it's also helping energy transitions. Uh, the third one is um, planning. We want to help and uh, make sure that when we begin to talk about energy planning in Africa, that it is not just planning for grid expansion, it is also planning for off-grid solutions. It is very obvious that at least 30 to 40% of the energy access we want for Africa in the next 30 years, at least 30, 40% has to come from decentralized energy systems, solar being so high on the list, more mini grids. So how do we do an integrated planning so that governments plan for 20 years, not only for grid expansion, but also mini grids. And, and finally, I so like uh, that the minister from Austria mentioned the deforestation problems. I am very worried about that. My country, we have probably 5% of forest cover left. The rate, we are amongst the worst deforested countries. We are also among the top five climate vulnerable countries. However, we're still cutting down the trees for buildings, but also for cooking and for buildings, and of course, illegal log logging. So I fully agree. I know uh, some of the good examples in Austria when we did the Vienna Energy Forums, the clever way you're using forest resources or in Denmark or in Sweden for also bio, bio energy generation, but at the same time in a sustainable way to keep the forest cover. That is an area where I would encourage <laughs> European institutions to look at. The deforestation rate in Africa is extremely high. And in addition, when you think about another billion people added to that population for buildings, for energy, primary energy services, you begin to see why access to renewable and affordable energy systems will be crucial if we're going to keep the forest cover. Over to you. Yeah, can I just add to that? I think Kande is so right. Thank you very much on the forest, you are absolutely right. And, and um, we, we're not doing as well as a lot of people think we are, by the way, Kande. Um, we're having some big issues right now on deforestation and bioenergy use. So the taxonomy and the finance system that's supposed to be really transformative is getting totally watered down by the forestry guys. And that's also where I think that, you know, we need to stop thinking that Europe is doing perfectly and we need to exchange our stories and figure out how we can better work together. You can count on me to work with you either through the Energy Transition Commission or through the Club of Rome or anything else on this panel. Um, whatever information you need, you have it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.